There's an old story about how to catch a monkey. In case any of you are in interested in how to catch a monkey, now, you, now you're going to know how to do it. First, you have to take a large, narrow-necked jar, just large enough in diameter at the top for a monkey to put its hand inside. Then you have to fill it partway with rocks so it's too heavy for the monkey to carry. Then you scatter some treats near the jar to attract them and you put some inside, inside the narrow-necked jar. A monkey will come along, if you're lucky, and grab the, you know, goodies, but he'll want the ones inside the jar too, so then put his hand in there and grab what's in there. And if you've set up your monkey trap properly, then he won't be able to get his hand out because he's got the goodies. Not without unclenching his hand. Not without relinquishing what he already has. The monkey catcher can just walk over and just pick up the monkey. Because the monkey isn't into the whole sacrifice thing. Because he's just a monkey, you know? And so you can catch him as a consequence of his own unregulated hypothalamic desires. You know, and to be, what would you say, charitable to the monkey, if you put out candy or something like that, it's like, how often does a monkey get candy? He's probably a little more motivated than you are to not let go, but you, you get the point. The monkey catcher can just walk over to the jar and pick up the monkey. The animal will not sacrifice the part for the whole. That's actually a pretty good phrase, eh? It's the animal that will not sacrifice the part for the whole. Perhaps this story is apocryphal, but as an eccentric psychology professor once told me, fiction lies to you in the most, truth, in the most truthful possible manner. Something valuable given up ensures future prosperity. Something valuable sacrificed pleases the Lord. Those are equivalent statements. One's more articulated, I would say that's the first statement, and the second one is more dramatic and more embedded in a collective religious dream, you might say. What's most valuable and best sacrificed? Well, obviously that depends on the culture and the time. What is at least emblematic of that? A choice cut of meat. Well, if you're a herdsman, for example, that, that's a big deal. If, I mean, generally speaking, throughout human history, meat has been a very valuable commodity, as it is, by the way, among chimpanzees. Chimpanzees hunt. They like to hunt colobus monkeys. And, you know, they'll, they'll basically start eating the damn monkey alive. They weigh about 40 pounds, despite the fact that the thing is screaming away. And that's pretty interesting, because one of the things it indicates is that Male monkeys, male chimps, they're the ones that do the hunting, aren't really inhibited that much when they're in hunter mode by what you might describe as empathy. And there's certain elements of human behavior that are reminiscent of that. You see that sort of thing emerge now and then in human battlefields when groups of men seem to abandon all internal regulation whatsoever to a degree that makes you wonder if internal regulation even exists. 